and welcome to Beer Sweden TV, the first episode. Uh, really excited to be here. As you can see, it's a beautiful spring day. You can see the sunshine beaming in here to, to Beer Sweden HQ. Uh, Who was that bloody idiot? I'm, you... I'm professional. Huh? Complete amateur, huh? Really? Well, welcome to the highly professional Beer Sweden TV episode. It's a big one, this one, Trev. It's a big one, because you know why? 50 episodes, we've done it. 50 episodes, six months. 100 beers, Trev? About 100 beers, do about two a show. Uh, we've arrived at the big 5-0. How do you feel? Here, come on, show me out. Show you out. Well done, big fella. Um, we've uh, arrived at the big 5-0. Welcome, everyone, by the way. Um, and uh, well, it's great to be here, Trev, isn't it? How do you think we've done? I think we've done really well. Uh, you, know, from, you know, from the beginning. You saw the little clip there at the beginning. Well, proper good, anyway. Well, I think so, don't you? I think we've come a long way. Um, we've tried some great beers, haven't we? Um, and uh, we've got a pretty good one here to celebrate the occasion. Uh, we have, um, I think, ex you know, explored a few styles. Hopefully you guys have had a lot of fun along with us. You can see that we're having great fun too. Trev, let's be honest, when we first started Beer Sweden TV... I was a bit of a heathen. Heathen? You were lout when it comes to beer, let's be honest. You were, you were a thug. Um, but um, it's changed, hasn't it? You've changed, haven't you? Gone on a bit of a journey together, haven't we? Half evolved. Huh? You've evolved. Uh, I, I have to say, to be honest with you, I remember this one shining moment in the last six months, and that was when you rang me up. This is true, people. That Trev rang me up at home, and he said, "I've just gone and bought a bottle of Gerza." And he, tears, tears, welled up. Sobbing. In my heart. I was so proud of you. Still am, actually. I get all warm, fuzzy feelings when I think about it. And that's really the point of Beer Sweden TV. This is really where we've been trying to go with it. Uh, the idea is that we just want to put great beers in front of you, you can see me trying them and hopefully it will turn you onto them and give you a yeah, little bit of an incentive to sort of try it out. Uh, so um, we're going to carry on Trev, aren't we, doing what we do, yeah, and we're going to uh, celebrate uh, this particularly special uh, Beer Sweden show with one of my absolute favourite beers. I'm stroking it lovingly, Trev, here. Um, shall I show the people? Go on in. Shall I show them what it is? Go on in. Because I'm excited. Look at the glasses, by the way. Look, you can tell this is very posh. And may I point out, by the way, that for the first time, I think, on Beer Sweden TV in 50 episodes, I'm wearing a shirt. Just Could to have mark it, the occasion. Well, the next, uh, in the hundredth episode, I will actually wear a shirt and iron it. I do promise. Uh, this, people, is the beer that we are going to be trying today. Just. I think what I do, Trev, because I don't need to say too much. I'm just going to leave you and the Beer Sweden viewers to drink in the vision of this bottle of beer. I'll be right back. enough silly music I put it back oh and I do apologize by the way I do apologize for the lack of ice bucket here uh, I am a beer drinker first and foremost don't own a stylish ice bucket but I do actually own this very very nice uh, metal pasta uh, saucepan uh, which has got real ice in it to be honest with you look just so that it, look, it's not stunt ice this is real ice okay so we're doing our bit um, okay Trev before we start on the beer um, I was thinking about it what my favorite moment was of the last 50 episodes it's a tough one actually because we've done a few silly things haven't we absolutely um but i think the highlight for me so far has to be for various reasons because it was kind of a little bit of a breakthrough moment was when i tried tactical nuclear penguin um halfway up a mountain in order uh with all my ski stuff on um and i said oh my god uh, and then the glass of beer, which is highly expensive, fell off the ch uh, fell off the bench and into the snow. But it's lovely. Let's give it a whirl. Oh my good god! Um, I laughed ski well that day. I tell you, the rest of the afternoon after I finished that bottle, I was an absolute god on those slopes. And even more importantly, it got picked up, didn't it? Got picked up. Got picked up by uh, Newsy, was it, of the United States? And, and and it went all over the place. Went a little bit viral. Bit of a milestone. Well, I say viral, just you know, mild cold. But I mean, it went around a little bit, so it was pretty cool to see that. So that was that's kind of my, I suppose, 
you know, top moment. What, what about yours? What, what was your, what's well, the most quite a few, obviously, as you've already alluded to. I've, I've turned it. I'm, t- <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sophisticated now, aren't I? Yeah, that's right. You and are. I was a thug. You are, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Bits and bops of Bob, but if, if I think of anything, it's probably probably this moment here. Cool. Now listen, I think it's time that we try this beer. Obviously, being the fiftieth episode, uh, we've uh, we've um, picked a beer that's just that little bit more special. When I say a little bit, I'm talking a lot actually. One of my absolute favourite beers of all time. Um, now, I'll get the beer out again so that you can see it. But basically, do you want me to hold this up, Trev? Mm. Be quick though, because I tell you, my arm's going to break. Right? This is quite heavy, this one. Uh, but look at the wonderful packaging that this beer comes in. Looks the business. It does look the business, doesn't it? It is very sexy and sophisticated. Juice, it's called, uh, Brut de Flanders. Uh, it is a Cuvée Prestige 2009 Vintage. So you wine guys, just look at this. This is where we're coming from. This is what I'm talking about. Do you think any um, wine blokes are going to be watching this? Yes, they will. They do. They do. They're getting frightened. I'm telling you that. I meet them in train and they get a little bit nervous, and rightfully so. Bostils Brewery, Belgium. Um, in a champagne sort of package, absolutely, and there's good reason for that, and I'll explain it why, uh, because it's very, very clever and very wine-like in the way that, way that it's made. Um, chilled down between two to four degrees, that's what they recommend that you serve this thing in. Um, and basically, how is it made? Well, this is kind of beer meets wine, sparkling wine. Trev, you're gonna love the story behind this beer. Basically, it's brewed in Belgium using summer barley, uh, it undergoes a fermentation process there. Then it also undergoes a secondary fermentation process in conditioning and a third fermentation process in the bottle. The bottles are then shipped to France, get this, this is cool, from Belgium to France, where it actually undergoes a technique, very, very common, what well, always used in, uh, in champagne uh, production and other sparkling wines, whereby uh, the bottle itself, I don't want to get too sort of... Um, uh, aggressive with this bottle because you know we want to want to try but basically the bottle itself is turned every day it's called remuage what do you think Trev? do you like that does that sound french no Rem- no okay uh, remuage whereby it's basically i do like saying it though Trev. Remuage. it is it is turned gradually every day and the angle of the bottle is also turned or, or lifted so that eventually after many weeks it is actually vertical. Guess what they do then, Trev? They freeze the bottle. They freeze the neck of the bottle so that you actually freeze this bung of yeast, because that's effectively what they're trying to do with this remouage. Uh, they're trying to get the yeast away from the sort of sticking on the bottle so that it actually uh, gathers at the neck of the bottle. Uh, they freeze it and then the pressure in the bottle pops it out. Did you know that? Pops no. it out. And that is called dégorgement, I think it is. Bung in a cold gap. Yeah, that's the sort of thing. It's just a nicer way of saying it, isn't it? Uh, well, a more sexy sort of way of saying it. Um, and that's it. And then I think they reprime it, uh, put a cork, um, and away we go. So what an amazing story behind this beer. I mean, this is beer made in a wine style. How many wines are made in a beer style, Trev? <coughs> Any? <coughs> Move on. Um, so that's the story behind this beer. 240 bottles of this were released at the Sustainable Lager about a week ago, a week and a half ago, Trev, something like that. Unfortunately, you can't buy one. They're all gone. Uh, we... Fortunately, I managed to get our hands on one. I feel a bit bad about saying this to you now because I know that some of you say, well, what are you talking to me about a beer I can't get hold of? I know, but please excuse us. It is a very special occasion. 50 episodes, Trev. 50 episodes. So, shall we, uh, have we talked about it enough? Do you want to see how, how proficient you are popping a cork? Oh, I'm pop cork. Mate. You've got three kids, killer. I know that. Uh, now then, um, in terms of ABV, 11.5%, Trev. 11 and a half percent. It's getting up there, isn't it? So this is kind of like wine-like strength, of course. Now then, watch, you better watch yourself here. Do you want to, because I can throw these at you, but. Um, oi, oi. oi, did I get you? Yeah. Right, here we go, right, ready? Now, a little trick that well, somebody there once told me was to twist the bottle and not the cork. That doesn't work, to be quite honest with you, Trev. Let's see if we're going to make a bit of a mess. The bottle flies off. Now, let's see, I want to see if I'm going to hit a seagull. Ah! Look at that. Ah! Oh, it's beautiful. We've got gun smoke. We've got... Ah, uh, Trevor. Trevor. I can call you Trevor now. I feel, I feel like it's a Trevor moment, not a Trev. Oh, this is lively. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, the smells of this, look. White grape. 
Hold one up, let's have a look. Apple, I can smell. Can you see this? Mm. Beautiful, tight, small bubbles, and a lot of them. Look, tell me Trevor, talk to me. Lovely. That, just visually, looks like a glass of fine sparkling wine, champagne. Uh, absolutely stunning. Look, I'm going to give you that one, but you have that one. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. I'm going to have this one. Um, just top it up a little bit. Now, it's got a little bit of head on it, of course. You don't normally get that in your sparkling wines. Um, but I tell you, when this dies down, this head, and it will, you'll be hard-pressed to, to, to actually know, blind tasting, that this wasn't a sort of a, a, a sparkling wine. Or you a, actually or think you'd be at a full, like, a, what they call sommelier? Yes, yeah, it's absolutely no problem whatsoever. Smell this, Trev. Lovely. I'll tell you what, I've got a lot of reference points. To me, instantly, Duval, I think of, because of that kind of grapey, uh, white, uh, almost sweet, it's very sweet, sort of white note to it. Um, and definitely got some green apples, I think there too. Uh, pear drops, uh, very fruity, very fruity nose. But there's a kind of dusty element to it as well, isn't it? It's almost like a dryness to the smell. Yeah, pear can, drops without a doubt. Pear drops you can get definitely. The Swedes won't know what that is, but anybody English will know but you could buy them in a shop from your little. You can get those learn all this sort of little pear things, can't you? Oh right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of the hard yeah. ones from England. Do you know the ones no, I mean? No, yeah, those two, those two. But it's definitely pear, but it's almost kind of like little artificial pear. It's difficult yeah. to explain it, but mm. it, but it's kind of like a, a sweet pear. Ciderish. Um, and definitely a cider note there as well, Trev. He is, I tell you, he's come on a long way. He's no longer allowed. You're no longer allowed. Look at us drinking this sort of beer. <laughs> now, it's a very small glass, Trevor. But even so, I can call you Trevor, can't I? We should give it a whirl. We should give it a whirl. Just a little one. Cheers. Cheers. Branding on the outside. Wow. Trev. Wow. I mean, it's creamy. What's so, what's so amazing about this beer, and I'm, I, I've got to use superlatives like amazing, stunning, awesome, is the mouthfeel. This is like drinking a cloud, isn't it, Trev? It just evaporates. You can't grasp it. You get that initial sweetness, all that fruity honey and, 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 and apple and pear and then suddenly it just evaporates on the tongue. Am I getting a little bit sort of too romantic and silly? Sorry, did you say something? If you could see, Jeff, he's, he's down that now, look, there's nothing left. Um, but it really is that's quite lovely. airy, isn't it? Mm. It's so delicate. I think that's a good word to describe this beer. Mm. It's delicate, it's elegant, um, it really is a, an amazing beer. Um, I don't know what else to say actually, Trev, other than we're going to have a great time finishing the rest of this bottle off. Cheers and beers. We're going to get to cheers and beers. We're going to get to cheers and beers, but before we do that... You're not going to bother rating it, surely? I don't it? know. I, I don't think I need to rate no. it. I think, I think you can work out yourselves what we, I would give this. Um, if you can hunt this down, if you can sniff this out, if there's a bar that is selling this, because you can't get it at System Lager, but if you stumble across a bar that's selling this, do whatever you can. Jump over the counter, buy it. It's worth it. It is a beer experience. Um, before we go, I just want to say, and I think Trev, Trevor, on behalf of you too, um, thanks for the last 50 episodes. Thanks for following us and, 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 and all your feedback and all your comments. We want more of that, please, because really that is kind of the oil that keeps us sort of motoring on, isn't it, Trev? Absolutely. Uh, we really enjoy it when you say, even if it's bad and you criticise us, that's good as well. That gets you going, doesn't it, Trev? Eh? Particularly you. Absolutely. Um, but, it, you know, it's all about feedback and, and, and two way communication, all that other Americana sort of, you know, marketing speak. But basically, get involved with us um, and we'll carry on drinking, uh, well, hopefully beers like this. But although next week I'm sure we'll be back to some sort of ranky, you know, uh, macro lager. But while we can, we're going to enjoy this. And until the next episode, episode 51, cheers and beers, people. Hey, that's it.